Uh, let's imagine that we've got some surface. I want to quickly stick to some examples. Um, I won't be giving you know, a more detailed lecture on the radiative heat transfer. Let's imagine we've got some body that, um, some body that's, that has got some temperature T and actually every body, every, each body uh, at a given temp, <laughs> also everybody, you're also emitting heat, heat and, and, and their energy by radiation. Um, each body at a given temperature T will radiate um, thermal energy and the, this radiative heat flux that is radiated uh, in every direction uh, can be described by the Stefan Boltzmann law. Uh, and it says that the radiative heat flux is proportional to the Stefan Boltzmann constant times times the surface area times temperature to the power of four. And you can multiply it by the emissivity of the material. Uh, emissivity is equal once if you've got perfect black body, uh, but real bodies are not perfect, so they have some some em em emissivities that are lower than, than, than one. This uh, sigma constant is equal to 5.76 to the power of uh, minus 8 watts per meter square uh, Kelvin to the power of 4. Um, and again, okay, let's now imagine, and I think that's one of the that one is to, to be remembered, but uh, something to be understood is, let's imagine that this body radiates heat to, to this surface. What happens then? Obviously, some of the energy will be absorbed by this body. And again, again the same situation follows, like if this body is at a, at a, at a given temperature, then again, this formula applies, it will, it will radiate um, thermal energy out of it. Uh, so some portion of the energy is absorbed and heats up the body, but some of the energy is reflected. Um, and the general law is that you've got alpha, which is absorption coefficient, plus rho, which is reflection coefficient plus tau, which is transmission and this one equals one. Uh, also as a matter of fact, always absorption is equal to emissivity. So there is no difference in the absorption and emissivity coefficient. Uh, let's forget that for a minute. I want to focus on this equation because it's not like, you know, uh, it doesn't appear out of nothing. You can clearly understand it and see it as a form of um, conserving energy. If you've got irradiative heat flux, uh, then, well, okay. It transports energy. The energy can be either absorbed or maybe not absorbed. If you've got a mirror, it will mostly reflect energy. So it's reflection. What's transmission? Transmission is if it goes through the, through the material, uh, through there in the same direction. Well, window, gases, etc. Probably not solids. Okay, so solids also like... Yeah, like it. Yeah, it's difficult to say if, if glass is really a solid or a liquid. Uh, yeah, but uh, some polymers that that yeah, I think they are definitely solids and they can have some transmission coefficients. Uh, so it's actually nothing else like saying okay, 
energy is conserved, it simply splits into, into um, um, how and where it's transported. Mm, and very, very important to remember absorption and emissivity coefficient is always the same. Um, we will be dealing um, we will be dealing with one of the model problems that you will be solving uh, with heat transfer because uh, with, with radiative heat transfer because I want to show you the numerical numerical problems that you may run into uh, and the numerical problems come from the fact that um, this flux is proportional to the temperature uh, um, to the power of four. Uh, it's clearly highly nonlinear, uh, and you can quickly you know, diverge from proper solutions. So you need to have proper uh, under relaxation techniques in the numerical procedure to to deal with that, and that's why we will be solving one of the uh, radiative problems. Uh, okay, and the short example is a real-life example that we had when simulating combustion in the furnaces. Uh, I think that's very, very um, that's very, very important from the educational point of view. Can I imagine we've been dealing with it's extremely simplified geometry. Uh, We've been dealing with some furnace geometry. Uh, imagine you had combustion here. And you know, the hot gases were, um, were going up. And we've been doing CFD simulations of such a case. Our customer was doing the experiment with the temperature sensors placed in the, um, in the combustion chamber. And the results that we got and he got, like, they were completely different, like completely different. The difference that we had was around 300 kelvins. Uh, and it was even not, uh, and, and the worst thing was that we had discrepancy of plus 300 kelvins in some areas and of minus 300 kelvins in some other areas. So it wasn't even like, you know, having it wrong, but everything wrong by around 300 kelvins. It was like having plus 300 kelvins or minus 300 kelvins from, from the experimental um, result. And that was really, really bad. It took us longer time to, to figure out why. Uh, and the answer is, well, can anyone, can anyone already guess? You neglect the radiation. But not in the simulation. Okay. We've neglected, yeah. And the thermal copies. Exactly. Like you can imagine that if you got fire here, it, it radiates plenty of thermal energy. If you place any temperature sensor here, which is basically like a solid sphere, with some temperature sensor, what happens is the radiation goes to this solid sphere and by radiation heats it up. So you've got what, what your thermocouple measures. It doesn't measure the temperature of the gas flowing here. It does measure, so to say, well, basically it measures its own temperature. And what, what's its own temperature is the um, is the temperature of balance between the actually convective cooling and radiative heating because of the proximity of the of the of the fire? Very very close. Uh, and I don't remember the the places, but there are also the the completely different simulation because it was a furnace, a boiler. Uh, so. Um, so in the boiler, the temperature of the walls is approximately 100 degrees centigrade because you got water uh, in the walls that you want to, to boil. Uh, so with respect to the temperature of the flame, the walls are extremely cold. So if you've got, you got some temperature sensor very, very 
close uh, to the wall. And what happens? It doesn't heat up so intensively due to radiation from the flame, but it transports by radiation plenty of energy out of the thermal, thermal sensor to the wall because the wall is much, much, much colder than the surrounding gas and everything that's inside. Uh, we, have, we have added corrections for actually experimental measurements. Like we, we have really written simple numerical equations um, for accounting for these effects. Uh, and by doing so, we, we identified the, the temperature, not the, out of the temperatures of the thermal, thermal sensors, we have calculated the, the uh, well, approximated gas temperatures in these places. And then like, pff, everything was okay within the margin of, I think, 70 degrees or something like that. So it was already 70 degrees, not plus 300, minus 300. Uh, so you, you see, it is really, this might be a very, very important phenomenon and, and such simple models can, can often help you understand or uh, approximate, calculate how much, how much uh, energy um, is transported by radiation.